Now that we've discussed some of the basic inputs, let's discuss how to perform calculation. Below the installation details section, there's a section named calculation, and it includes the calculation types drop-down menu. This drop-down lets you add one or several calculation types to your scenario at once. 3 plus offers a variety of calculation types depending on your goal. We'll walk through each one of them. Starting with the most foundational calculation within 3E+. And that's the heat loss, heat loss per hour calculation type. This one gives you a result of how much heat loss is seen through a foot length of pipe or other unit area in one hour. You'll see that beyond the basic inputs on the system application and installation layers that were input above, you only need to specify the ambient temperature, the process temperature, and the wind speed. The ambient temperature is a representation of the temperature in this space. And it can vary whether the pipe or vessel is outside exposed to the weather or indoors in a semi-conditioned or conditioned space. The process temperature is the temperature uh, at which the fluid or air inside the pipe or duct is expected to be when the system is operating. And just like ambient temperature, the wind speed uh, is an assumption based upon the location as well. Now, once I've input all of those values, to the right, I can click the Calculate button, and the results will be displayed. Uh, the results for this calculation type include the heat flow through one foot of pipe as well as the exterior surface temperature and efficiency. As this was the ca calculation on a system that included varied insulation thickness, it provides results over a range of insulation thicknesses up to 10 inches. So adding one additional layer of detail to the foundational heat loss per hour calculation is the heat loss per year calculation. This has the same inputs as heat loss per hour, uh, but the additional input for how many hours per year the system is operating. Now there are 8,760 hours and 365 days. So entering the operating hours here will give you the resulting heat loss over that time frame. So in this case, we'll enter 8,320 hours in a year that would be operating. And we'll hit the calculate button off to the right. It will display the annualized results for the same setup that we had under the heat loss calculation. So this will display the surface temperature, the heat flow, uh, but now they're annualized and the efficiency is included over a range of insulation thicknesses because again, we set the thickness to vary. Next, we're layering some additional detail on the heat loss calculations by performing an economic cost of energy calculation. So the cost of energy calculation is useful in estimating the potential savings in operating costs through insulating. You'll see that it has many of the same initial inputs, such as heat loss no, or hours per year as heat loss, such as hours per year, the ambient temperature, process temperature, and wind speed. But now you need to input the fuel type that's being used, the efficiency of the system, and the cost of fuel. This calculation type will take that information and give you a cost per year to operate and the savings associated with insulating. So if I click Calculate here uh, with the values input, you'll see that it gives me an annual operating cost per foot, heat flow through that per foot, heat loss, and then the savings uh, versus an uninsulated pipe. So similar to cost of energy, uh, we have environmental impact. So this has similar inputs as cost of energy, but provides the result of the emissions avoided through adding insulation. And of course, that's based on the fuel type being used. So this provides estimates on possible annual reductions in greenhouse gas emissions and other emissions based on fuel source. Uh, this calculation type is critical to document the contribution of insulation to decarbonization goals. So when clicking the Calculate button uh, with this calculation type, uh, you'll see it provides 
estimates for all of these emissions across various insulation levels. So you can calculate reductions based upon the, those results. Again, building on the last few uh, calculation types, adding more and more inputs, is the simple payback calculation uh, more detailed uh, than the, the energy cost calculation? So this takes the annual energy savings calculated in the cost of energy calculation and adds in an estimate of the cost to install that insulation. Here you'll see some additional inputs for the pricing of insulation. Uh, three plus includes estimates uh, for this. Uh, obviously the price will vary and the cost include, costs included are illustrative of the cost differences seen in the field. Uh, and when I hit the calculate button here, you'll see the results included, the number of years until the cost to install the insulation is recouped through energy savings. So here, it's well less than a year for this setup, if you were to insulate, uh, that it would pay back via simple payback. Lastly, at least in terms of economic calculations, is the economic thickness calculation. It takes, takes it one step further beyond that simple payback calculation by projecting out energy cost savings over time, which needs to take into account factors such as inflation, the discount rate, the expected lifespan of the installed insulation. And if you hit the calculate button for this one, what it will do it will, is it, it will highlight the most cost-effective thickness of insulation. Uh, it provides the combination of the lowest install cost with the highest estimated savings over the life of the insulation. And in this case, it's three inches, a single layer, that provide uh, the best payback uh, for the owner in that case. So now that we've walked through a calculation that produces a target result that's highlighted, let's talk about the personnel protection calculation. So this calculation type is used to make sure that the max surface temperature on the outermost surface of the pipe did not exceed a set temperature. This protects people in the space from being injured if they touch or lean on uh, the piping. This limit is typically 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but you can customize that here. You'll see that when I add the calculation type, just like with the foundational heat loss calculation type, it also calls for process temperature, ambient temperature, and wind speed, the air around the pipe. After calculating, you'll see that one row is highlighted green, and that's the lowest level of insulation that satisfies the design goal of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see here, three inches, 146, three and a half is 132, 135.2. Similarly, if I were to increase the process temperature, you could see that it will require more insulation to bring that temperature down. In this case, it moves it up to four inches. Additionally, a new feature uh, that was in the original 3E plus in a more limited form um, is that you can now create a thickness table to use in specifications based on these target calculations. So for personnel protection, it would create a table over a range of pipe sizes and process temperatures. We can say that when using this amount of insulation, you'll meet the goal of being less than 140 degrees. So it does all that hard work for you, uh, iterative work of changing uh, pipe sizes, changing process temperature, and does it automatically over a range. And you can see that when the table's created here, and I'll enlarge it, we're across the top, it has the range of temperatures. And across the side, it has the range of pipe sizes. And within the chart, it tells you the thickness of insulation uh, that's required to uh, meet the personnel protection goal. Additionally, uh, moving on to condensation control, another target calculation. 
you can see here that there are different target inputs uh, with options for dew point, relative humidity, and wet fold temperature. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say the relative humidity is 60%. And typically, condensation is done on colder process temperatures. So I'm going to say a process temperature of 20 degrees, an ambient temperature of 80 degrees, and zero for wind speed. I hit calculate here. It tells it shows you how much insulation is needed uh, to ensure that condensation does not occur in that pipe. Now, if I raise the, the relative humidity, you can see that the results will require more insulation to ensure that um, the outer surface of that uh, insulation is above the dew point temperature. And just like with personnel protection, you can create a thickness table uh, for cold process temperatures over a range of pipe sizes uh, using the thickness table option when you check that box. Now, say I want to limit the amount of heat loss per section of pipe. And to do that, I would use the heat flow limitation calculation. It has basic inputs for for heat loss calculate, you know, as a heat loss calculation, except now there's a target in which uh, you can set a limit to how much heat loss you want in. So say I'll put 80 in here, 80 BTUs per foot, two hours per foot. And when I hit calculate, it'll highlight the first row uh, that the, the amount of insulation meets that heat flow target for you. So the final target calculation we have is the efficiency calculation. Similar to the other target calculations, it has the foundational inputs for heat loss, so the process temp, ambient temp, and wind speed. But it now includes a target efficiency value. So this is the target that reduces the heat flow through the pipe when compared to uninsulated piping. So in this case, uh, I want to say it's 80% efficient. So uh, it's going to block or reduce the uh, amount of heat loss in the pipe by 80% compared to an uninsulated pipe. And when I click Calculate, it'll highlight the lowest amount of insulation that's required to meet that heat loss, or I'm sorry, that efficiency target. So now that we've discussed target calculations, uh, let's discuss interface temperatures. This is only relevant when you have fixed amounts of insulation, and in particular, when you have two or more layers of insulation, as noted here. So I'm going to add a second layer of the same insulation type, and they'll both be fixed amounts. I'll default to 75 degrees uh, for an ambient temperature, a process temperature 850, and a wind speed of zero uh, in this case. And what this calculation does is it tells you the temperature between the pipe and the first layer of insulation, between the two layers of insulation, insulation one and insulation two, and then on the outside of insulation two. I'll hit calculate. And once the results appear, you'll see that uh, layer zero says the results between the pipe and the first layer, and that's pretty close to the process temperature as it's just at the outside surface of the pipe. And then layer one is between insulation one and insulation two. You can see it's dropped quite a bit. And then layer two is outside of insulation two. Now, this might be useful if you have a high temperature application and you want to see how much the initial layer of insulation that, that might be rated for a higher temperature brings down the temperature before moving to a, a lower cost material that doesn't, doesn't, you know, it won't be exposed to a high uh, of a temperature so it could be used. And, and this uh, software will give you results particular to each type of insulation uh, that you're specifying. 